Now I'm going to start today. I'm going to get right in there and I'm going to give you a couple tips as we're going along. I think you're going to really enjoy this. Um, I like to save, I like to save my old water. Now this is dried. This has a lot of different pigments in it and I'm just going to rehydrate it a little bit just like you would your regular watercolors. And I am going to use this. Not a whole lot. I'm going to use this to paint my outline for my mushrooms that we're going to be making. Now, this, um, I love using a dish like this. This is just a little crystal dish that I had from I don't know where. Because look, you can set your brush there. <laughs> your brush won't roll. I also have some like this. And that's dried out too. We're going to rehydrate that because this one's a little bit darker. But this one, because it's just a smooth top on this little glass bowl. I think this little glass bowl might have a chip in it. Maybe. No. <laughs> but uh, when on this one, look at the pearlescent come to life. Um, on this one, I like to I like to give it all a little mixy mix up first. But on this one, if we put this here, it's gonna roll. And you know what happens when it rolls. <laughs> okay, so we I am painting uh, watercolor mushrooms for our heart boxes of love. And I'm gonna kind of hold this up a little bit so you can you can really see what's going on here. So this is just a round brush. It's a number three. And it has a pretty nice point. It's not an expensive brush. And this is the watercolor block. That means all the paper is glued together on all of the sides, except it'll have a little notch in it right here. And at the end of this, when we paint it, I'm gonna place it up with this. And I actually like to do two paintings at once. The two paintings at once I'm gonna be doing so you can really see the differences. One is on a round watercolor block. Just still gotta look and make sure that the link for that is in our Amazon store. <laughs> we have an Amazon storefront. Oh, and I also wanna invite you um, subscribe to our channel here on YouTube and you can find us at the 1870studio.com and I do live online workshops. All of our social media is the 1870studio. So if you wanna find us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, that's who you're looking for. But uh, each week I do free workshops um, with different arts and crafts. Sunday is Stained Glass Sunday, 11 a.m. Mystery Monday, make something with my husband, Morton. Uh, and that's always fun. And somewhere else, in a, we live in a big church. Watercolor Wednesdays, are they're so fun. 5 p.m., all of these are Eastern Standard Time. And then Fuse Class Friday, 6 p.m. So typically these all go out live on uh, where I do them from. But I'm going to start streaming them on other things too. Leave a comment if you want to see them streamed here on YouTube as well. So let's grab this paint over here. And I like to, like I said, I like to really mix it up, mix through. Because if there's any lumps or bumps in here, because this was just water we were brushing off. Um, if there's any bumps in here, we can get them out right now. And look, you see that beautiful pearlescent? Oh, it's earthy color. It's gorgeous. A ready brown clay color. It's perfect for our outline. So to make to paint mushroom is so easy. I'm gonna hold this up and we're gonna work on the rule of thirds. So a third is divide this visually in half, a third, a third, a third, both vertically and horizontally. I'm going to start right about here, and I like to start by planting our mushroom. Let's plant our mushroom stem. So I'll paint my lines from the outside. And then I typically am going to pour some more water in here. And I like to keep my water in a container that's easy to open, easy to pour from. 
I'm going to dilute that because we want this soft. And um, if you put the top right in and evaporate it, and then while you're painting, this is the extra special part, you won't accidentally dip your brush hair in your water. Cheers and dehydrated. Okay, so I'm going to rinse this off a little bit because that's really dark. Get a little bit of water on here. This is this is wonderful for a very first time painter, or for somebody who's been painting a long time. And my clear water is going to be floating on top of all the color. So watercolor will dry, and it'll dry pretty quick, so you want to work with it quick. So I'm just brushing in from either side. I'm going to leave that little nice dark line there. I'm Dip in there and get some more water on my brush. And see how I'm holding my brush sideways. I'm holding it. Let me show you. I'm holding it like this against the paper. And pulling it in. Oops. Don't worry about that. Dip. I'll keep that shadow out there for you. And pull. We don't want this hard line. Hard line I don't like. Sometimes I do. <laughs> Not right now. So I'm just going to soften it. Look, you can just coax it when it gets too close. Just coax it. And I like doing this rather than drawing in pencil. Now you can't erase it. You see there, I made a little boo-boo. It's not a boo-boo. It's going to be beautiful. And I like to tilt and let the paint do its magic. <laughs> See how the paint had gathered on there, even though this is an undercoat. I like to do that. So now we're going to think about where the um, gills are on a mushroom. So this is the stem. We need the gills now. And I like gills. See how this, since I thinned it down, it's a lot, it's a lot less. <laughs> So I'm just going to paint in. This is our background color for our gills. And you don't have to paint it solid. If you, if you want to leave a little bit of white, do that. I'm going to touch that right into the cat because it won't matter. But this we're putting behind it because the, um, the gills, the gills are going to be a magical part of this mushroom. And the top. <laughs> Now, I'm going to go into our other color, into our darker color up here. This is our concentrated darker color. I'm going to put that up here. I'm just going to make sure everything is mixed out good. I get no loose clump. And then something I really like to do with my watercolor. Take my brush and give it a twirl. You see, I'm going to... Just twirl it with your, between your thumb and your fingers. Just twirl it. Twirl it to get a beautiful nice point and then squish it. Squish it, put it up with um, paint up to get a, a flat point on around. Okay, so for right now I'm just going to twirl it and I'm loading the brush here. I'm loading the brush with this paint. And even though this is, this is people, you know, this is our dirty water. This is beautiful, beautiful paint. And I don't like to waste it. <laughs> so here I'm going to take, I'm going to make this top come down just around, just around the edge. Just give mushroom a hug. But, and look, can you see that? The brush is on. So go back in. Brush on loaded because paint came off. Go back and swirl it, swirl it, load it up, <laughs> load it up and do it again. So we're going to load it up and I'm going to painting here on this, more on my side. Bring it down and bring it just there. Just down and under. We're going to have a very 3D mushroom. So now I'm going to go into our lighter paint where I put the water to dilute it more. I'm going to fill it with basically water and then I'm going to brush but I'm not going to take it the whole way down to the gills this K 
cap. It just has some real natural shadow that we just put on it. But if I touch it into the gills, it's gonna it's gonna bloom. I might actually accidentally do it, and if I do accidentally do it, totally fine. But again, I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna just coax out the coax out that line. Do you see that line up there? I wanna coax it out. And here I have a little, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just twirl this against the side. That's the empty your brush, just twirl it against the side. I'm gonna go over here, because lucky here's a drop. We're gonna take that drop, push it up, and now I'm just gonna kind of almost scrub to get that line to soften and disappear. We want just this, see that cool, cool natural shadowing that's happening? That's what we want. Now the secret with watercolor, this is the, if if you get one tip from here, get this tip. You have to let this dry before you start working on it again. See, it's glistening. If I put paint in there, it's just gonna bloom. It's gonna go crazy. So we're gonna take this guy. And we're gonna set him to the side here. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you what, how it blooms. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Down here, I'll take a little bit. This is still wet. I'm gonna try to paint here, but look. See that paint spreading out? In this case, I'm actually liking it. I'm gonna do that again. We're gonna put some little dots down here. A little bit darker. So if you wanna work on it like that, it won't bloom out here to where it's dry. It won't come out there, but it will definitely bloom in that paint. I'm just gonna put some lots down. It'll make that it'll make that um, stem a lot more interesting. Okay, <laughs> looks like a little potato now. We're gonna set this down to dry. This is why you want to use. You really want to use two. If you're impatient like me now, I could take a hair drop of a dryer. I could dry this. I could do that. It's loud. I don't like loud noises. So <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Instead, we're going to take this guy. This is another watercolor block. It's all glued around the edges, so there's no taping required on your watercolor paper. Normally, on a watercolor, you, you tape around the edges. So this is a watercolor tablet that, of a painting that I've been working on. And this one, see here, I've taped around the edges. I actually take this off to show you because this one's done. So you just untape it. I save my tape to use again. You don't have to tape it up at the top. Where the gum is, you don't have to tape it there. But the rest of it, you have to tape. Well, you're best to tape it. I'll show you what happens if you don't tape it. This is a painting that I did on one of our watercolor Wednesdays, I think. Whoops. And I love to reuse everything. <laughs> I really do. So I will definitely reuse this tape. But sometimes this is just regular dollar store kind of paint or tape. And sometimes it gets weird as it peels off, but that, that looks really good. So there, there you see the edges and stuff on this painting. Now to take this off, all I do is take that, tear it up. And this lays nice and flat. This is a nice flat painting. Castle on the hill, little, little water for it. Um, Actually, that's a church, and that's Edinburgh Castle up there, way up there. But now, if, if you don't tape your watercolor down, and you don't use watercolor block, I'll show you what happens here. Uh, these ones are really small, so they're not good to illustrate on, because if they're smaller, they don't curve up a lot. But they will curve. They will curve, so... 
tape it, but I like, I really do love using a watercolor block too. So we're gonna, that's what we're gonna do. Gonna use our watercolor block and I'm gonna be painting with, uh, today I'm gonna be painting with these Angora paints. This link is definitely on our Amazon storefront influencer link. You can click to there by going to the 1870studio.com. You will find these. These are opaque colors of watercolor. They're made in Germany. They're fantastic. I love, I really love it. And I love that it's, it's a nice low profile box that I don't have to do a lot of fussing with. I don't. And the colors truly are opaque. You can um, see some of them here I've painted on little pistachio faces on these little pistachio shells. These are gonna turn into flower fairies. And the other kind of paint that I'm gonna be using is the Pearlescent Fine Tech Premiums. This is on our link too. In, um, on our website and these 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 put the magic touch on the mushrooms <laughs> okay all right let's let's keep it going so I've talked long enough actually that's probably dry <laughs> that's dry let's 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 um, flesh out I want to I want to just show you the gills I'm gonna come up here and grab some of this and I want to pull you up close and show you how I grab these colors because a lot of times I think when we're watching and learning, when they say grab a little color, what do you do? Do you dip it in here? Do you put it all around? I don't want to do that. So see here when I roll it out on the side, see the color coming down? That, that brush had way too much paint in it. So what I want to do to grab a little color, come up here on the side. These bowls work really, really good. You can pick them up anywhere. They work wonderful. And I love using a clear bowl because you can the light actually comes through. <laughs> you can see the color of what's in your money water. So I'm just going to twirl this brush so I get a nice fine point. That's what I want. Nice fine point. And then I might dip it right in the very, right in that little line, just for a little bit more. We're gonna come in here and we're gonna do our mushroom gills. The mushroom gills, I can see where the stem is up here. So I'm gonna take the first gill, I'm gonna think of it in quarters. Think of it in quarters, right? And go a quarter and then come to the half. And I typically always start from the stem and go out. But sometimes we want them, I'm going to load my brush that same way again, get a little bit of it right from the, right from up here. We don't want a lot of water. We want a drier watercolor this time. Load it by rolling it. And then another good thing is don't be afraid to turn your painting around. <laughs> so quarters, let's go here. I did the one and I just painted it out my arm over here so I'm not making a shadow for y'all. Up is going to be straight up. Think of it almost like the face of a clock. But we're bringing these things into our mushroom stem. These lines have to come into the mushroom stem. So I like to start halfway and then slice it up like you would do a pie. Again, I always need to be reloading your brush, always. Because you're painting it off. Of course you have to reload it. Give it a little twisty twist. <coughs> Sorry. Take it and, and go halfway between this point and this point, and then you want to aim for halfway between this point and this point. And that's how you're going to get a really nice perspective of um, how your mushroom gills are working. Half to half. Half to half. They can be straight. They can be wiggly. I actually went up into the edge of, I should have stopped them there. But I kind of like that. Well, this one will start. 
start up opposite way, come down, turn this, and now again, go halfway, and then you're aiming for halfway, half to half, right, start here. And you're never going to run out of space or get weird if you do this. Half to half. I kind of messed that one up. And you can do the difference. We're out of paint. Let's load it up. Let's load it up. And I would love to hear you comment on this if this is helpful for you, if you enjoy this. If you watercolor, I would love to hear what you think. And the thing is, with every kind of art, with every kind of craft you do, there are nine zillion jillion ways to do it. Nine zillion. And if you do your different, that's awesome. This way, I like to go back in, and I like to now put in little rando lines, and I think they give it real character, because if you look at the underside of a mushroom cap, if you look at these gills, they're never, ever the same. They're not perfectly lined up. That I can even hint. It's going way back there. You can make the, just those decisions then. And now, like anything here that didn't go the whole way up, I might take it the whole way up. Put in some little wispy lines, random little wispy lines. That's going to give your painting character. Now here, I like to just, this brush is almost dry. I have not reloaded that. I'm going to go up in here and just touch a little bit to get some um, shadow right by the base. Right by the base here. And this line here, see here, it's a little bit wavy. I want it straighter. I'm going to load up my brush again. And I'm just going to straighten out this line. by going over the top of it. Okay, now this is going to come up and curve around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up that brush again. I'll show you how we load it. Only the time I'm going to come more. Actually, let's let's put on some of this wall, some of this paint because this paint's a little bit thicker. But let's come in here and grab some water. I don't want to load it up too much with water. Can you see it running down here as I do this? Paintbrush by paintbrush. <laughs> and you can see the water is getting deeper. So rather than pouring, sometimes I like to, when I don't want it too wet, I like to just refill with my, with my um, other water. I'm going to get the stuff off the sides because the stuff on the sides will dry and it will get clumpy and weird. So I just to reconstitute it all, give it a mix. Okay, so now I'm going to come, I'm going to take the, um, what's the word? <laughs> the wetter paint, that's it, the lo looser paint, looser paint. You can still see the shimmer in it, it's not clumpy at all. This is a combination of the Angora and Fine Tech. I rinse both both of those colors in here. So it's a bit of column A, a bit of column B. I'm gonna set that guy out there because I'm using, using that one more. So here I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna make the edge of this mushroom happen. I'm gonna start here. It doesn't matter where you start. And I'm just gonna line around. Gonna bring that line right around. That's perfect. I love that. I love that. <laughs> and this way, see because how this little guy comes up into the cap a little bit. I'm gonna load my brush up again. 
get some of that not as wet as that water wet water color just the right amount of wet we're gonna follow this line and we already have our lines here we already have them made And by doing this, we just really give it a nice little, a nice little 3D feel of that little mushroom. Now, I'm going to also take this now, and I'm going to put out where, where our skyline is. Some of it I might have a little, little bit of it there. And I'll dip into my wet, wet water here. In the wet, in the wet stuff here, and I'm not saying this is gonna be brown. It's not. This brown is just our base color, and I want to keep this. I want to keep this without a lot of um, detail in it, and I want to let some of the white on here. But we just need a horizon. We need somewhere to plant our little mushroom. And this can be a, a horizon for the um, foreground, just for the foreground. Because we are going to put some little critters in here. This can just be that. Into the looser color. And I promise you we are going to introduce color right now. I'm going to um, this brush, this brush here. We want to we want to clean this brush, so I don't have a dish of clean water. This is how I do it when I want to clean a brush. I'm going to go in here, spray on my brush, roll it on the side. Any color will roll down. That should have. Almost all pigment out of no, there's still some right at base, but it's pretty clean, pretty clean. So I'm happy with uh, happy with how clean that is now. I'm gonna just scoop these over here. So we're gonna bring in our sky now. We're gonna introduce the sky. We're gonna do it with these Angora paints that are so lovely. I love them. People always ask me what my favorite whatever is. Favorite art or craft, favorite thing to use, whatever. And the answer will always be the same. Whatever I'm working with at the time, I appreciate. I just appreciate being in that moment. Look at those colors. Oh my gosh. We're going to come here in the blues and see how, like, that blue has the green that I got on it. Um, we're going to go with a blue sky. Now, any of any of the blues will do. Any of them will. And I don't, since I don't have my, um, since I don't have my clean water here, and oh, well, this is a piece, this is a piece of watercolor paper that I had cut off of a, of a ping that I was framing. So if you have these little things, these are great to use as your little wiper to turn into bookmarks and stuff. There's a great little tip for you. I'm putting all these little out there for you. So what I'm gonna do now is move your painting because you don't want to spray on that and um, hydrate this. I'm gonna get really close and I'm just gonna hydrate what's God, I'm gonna be using. I need more water in there. I'm gonna really get those hydrated because we're gonna paint a sky, beautiful sky. Oh, and we're doing this whole painting with this number three round. So what I like to do is take, we'll start up at the top, load your brush, load your brush right in this pan. And I like to come to the edge and go in. This is a great way to feel how quick, look how quick paint leaves the brush brush does not hold a lot. That brush is not holding a lot for us. Look, it's out already. 
what are we going to do? I'll tell you. We're going to take this clean water supply. We're going to take that clean water and we're going to dip. <laughs> we're going to dip right in here. Dip in, dip out. Don't swirl it around. Now I can make that paint spread in out. And look. Now we can spread the, our two loads of a loaded watercolor that we put on here. We can spread that around and make the sky beautiful. You don't have long to work with it. You work in little areas when you're doing this. You get a line you don't make in your sky, whatever. Paint it out. We don't want to paint over into the mushroom. I'm going to come back here again and get some of that deep, deep blue. Look now where it's wetter. Look how it, it'll just make these cool little clouds for you. Oh, you're going to love it. You are going to love it. And one thing about painting, don't ever let it frustrate you. You just keep, just keep going. And the very worst case scenario, if I ended up not liking anything on this, I could cut it in little strips. Use some rubber stamps on it, give it to friends as a bookmark. I'm going to show you something now here where we take, we'll take just, um, can you see the, see how glossy that's getting there? I'm going to paint here where the sky is going to go. I want to show you this technique. And this little brush, it doesn't hold a lot of water. But I'm going to come right in here. We're going to paint all of this white space with water. Just paint it with water. Don't let it touch your mushroom. We do not want it to get into that mushroom. And this is going to dry quick. I'm going to come in here, I'm going to grab some color, and I'm going to show you how color blooms. This is a great way if you want to make little clouds down in your sky. You can turn it sideways. You can just smooth that paint out. This is a lovely technique, too. I'm going to take it right to our little horizon. I'm not going to touch that mushroom. <laughs> Sneak up right beside it. I'm going to let those little clouds look at them. Who knows what they are? Let's turn it upside down and see again. Oh, I love them. So if you want to get the feeling of soft little easy clouds, that's a great tip to do it. And again, can you see the difference here where we're up here at the top? We'll take that same color blue, go in from the corner, and you learn really quick, look, that brush is, that brush is about empty. Put it up again, down here, and we'll go in. It's empty. <laughs> so we're going to go in and, in and out of our clean water. As long as you don't shovel it around, you're okay. Just don't shovel it around. I touched the mushroom. <laughs> but thankfully it's dry, so it's not going to run for us. Need more water. And I still have some of this pretty blue on my brush. And take this and have it. I like to make the guys look smaller as they get further away. And one of the things that you can do by doing that is making some little tiny faraway cloud fields. So here we're going to do the same thing. We're going to dip, put the color in. I'm sorry, just put water in. Just put water on this. Put water on this. You can 
see that actually gave us some blue for the sky. But we're gonna we're gonna get the blue up a little bit a little bit more to rub that right down to the horizon. Grab a little bit of the blue and just dot. Just some little dots. Random. Random, random. Let it just do its bloom for a minute. And then I come up here and put some little darker blue up here in the sky. Let me do that. I'm going to get a little dip of water. I'm going to keep some of the white spots, but I do like to take it, like to take it just running along your horizon. I just give them a little, run it along the mushroom. Because you don't want to, you don't want to break in the sky. I saw that once when I was out. The only time I ever saw a straight line kind of wolf look thing in the sky, and I, had, I took a picture of it, find it sometime and share it with you. Um, I was in Arizona, it had rained, and I looked up in the sky. It was like something from out of a science fiction movie. There was just like a little clear rectangle up in the sky, like a little clear rectangle. And I took a picture of it, I'm like, what the heck? The clouds must have made it look like that. I don't know, have you ever seen anything like that? So I typically like to come in under a white cloud and put a little darker line and then just give it a little, just give it a little. <laughs> you can go crazy with it, you'd be all right. Just putting the clouds in. This really made it lovely. But I want to show you something here. I was I, w I was overexcited. I wasn't dipping in, coming straight out. And you can see our water. Well, it's pretty still, it's still pretty clear. It does have a little tinge of blue to it. And um, I always remember to cork this back up. If you don't cork that back up, you're gonna be sorry. So this little this little guy here. If there's not much blue to paint out on this little bookmark. Okay, colors for our mushroom. So I'm going to put, um, I think I'm going to use some reds and oranges for the mushroom cap. Sometimes I will just hydrate on the colors that I'm using. Sometimes I'll just do that. I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to grab some of this. And I'm just going to paint this right along the top. I might put another bit of that color right over here. This is, this is super easy. I'm going to go right into this color. And I'm going to take it, and let's paint it right up here. Oh, maybe I'll paint that color around here a little bit. Okay. Let's come up to, let's come up over here to these colors. This color is really pretty. It's more of a peachy. We'll put that up there. And I am not washing my brush off every time. I'm gonna put some in here too. We'll let that little little in the middle. I'm gonna take some of that peachy right back here too. Right back around the back. Yep. Okay, now here we're gonna come into this red. We're gonna go nice deep red up here at the top. I need water. I'm gonna go into my dirty water. It was too, it wasn't flowing nicely. And watercolor is about to flow. I'm gonna give this mushroom 
some little bumps on it. They're going to come in here with their red. And if some of these little brown undertones stay, that's good. <laughs> that is good. So here, I'm going to do this same again. Bring some red down. And the, the nice part about painting with color palette like this, I can I mix that one and that one and that one outside? Yeah, but I I think painting whenever whenever I paint on a palette that's like a palette like this, and I do you can see I do use these. That one I use a lot, <laughs> but um, the look at the paint. It, it's just like a little there. It gets funky. So. I, I appreciate this. So this this one here, now this is this is something that I like to do. I'm gonna just dip this in here, dip it in. I have all that, there's a whole lot of red on here. So I'm gonna come around down here and just put some of that. I'm gonna have this as a <laughs> reverse mushroom. And I still got a lot of red on this brush. So I'm gonna take it and just put some along here. It won't stay red. It won't stay red, I will tell you that. You gotta watch to see what color this turns into. <laughs> won't stay red, but I'm washing my brush out. That's what I'm doing right now. Building depth, building interest, and I'm washing that brush out. Um, I kind of feel like this is a little mushroom just out in a field all alone. I kind of want to go back in the back back. Uh, and I want to put some mountains back there. I'm going to take hydrate. Let's hide. And I'm going to hydrate the green too. So I know I'm going to be using that. I got the brush. I got the brush in my mouth. That's why it's fucking weird. Look at that whole glorious palette there for you to see. So here, let's grab a little bit of, let's take a little bit of this guy. Let's go way, 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 way back here. Way back, so far away. To make a little mountain way back there. That's it's just so far. I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna grab another shade and come back over here and put another little little mountain way way back there. There's so those mountains are so far back. And we'll do the same over here. Just make a little. Well, that one's more like a little gentle hill in the distance, way, way, way in the distance. And what I'm going to do is bring some of that color right up here. And I'm going to start putting some, just painting just a little bit of grass around here. I think this almost needs to be a little fairy mushroom. And I'm going to dabble any Look at these spots, had some blobs on them. I'm gonna just paint them out. Be another, oh yeah, we'll put some of the red up here. Oh, got a little blue in there. Are we bothered? No, <laughs> not at all. Okay. Now I'm going to take that color, I'm going to go with a little bit of that here, just a little bit, look, wiping my brush off. This, this, I'm not exaggerating, this rag, <laughs> I have seen people paint and they go through rolls of paper towels, rolls of paper towels. This rag, this tissue has been with me for about two weeks of painting. And when I'm all done with it, I will, I recycle them into cool art. 
Okay. Uh, uh, let's put some other elements in here. Let's let's find nice bright red. Nice bright red. And let's go right here because we're gonna have a little ladybug. We're actually gonna have two little ladybugs. Every little ladybug needs a little friend. I don't ever like to just see a lonesome ladybug. And here in the old church, we have, um, oh my gosh, we have so many ladybugs. So this is how you draw, how you paint a, a ladybug is just half a circle, half a circle. You stretch it out a little bit or not, doesn't matter. I have some red on here. I'm gonna take it and put it right up there. Don't waste your paint. I'm gonna paint it around that edge. I love that, okay. So uh, next, oh, I know who we need now. I'm gonna dip in this water, get into the brown. So we got another friend we gotta paint in here. This is the best little friend in the world. And ironically, we paint him a lot like that ladybug. So just circle of brown. Uh, uh, kind of more like an oval than a circle. Just this. Just this. And if I want to make one that's further away, I think I will. I think I'll give him a little friend back here. That's a lot of paint that I just put on there. We'll let that dry. Make him bigger than that hill, but he's closer. This is a really fun way to play with your perspectives, too. Okay, so there's a whole lot of brown left in here. I can't put that on here, so I gotta just rinse it out. Rinse, roll, rinse, roll, <laughs> rinse, roll. And I do this. Um, just to loosen and get all the paint off of there. And then if you just, if you just run your paintbrush, let me pick this up to show you. Let me set this down so I don't knock anything over. Precariously balance. You can, you, you can see here, see how that's piling in there. There were clumps from where your watercolor is drying. I get sad when I see people dump this water out. This water is the best thing to paint with. But I'm gonna just run this through and keep running it up here. Rinse at the top. Don't go all the way to the bottom. Don't go all the way to the bottom. And look, the water already coming out of there is clear. So now we have our little um, off cut here on there. I can see a little bit brown. Paint it off. <laughs> Paint it off. Okay. So now let's go in with some green. We need some green on here. And they're, the greens, oh, the Angora greens are awesome. Um, I don't have them too hydrated. I'm going to give them a little. This is a really fine mister. If I want to just get in on one, I can. If I want to get them all, I just stretch out a bit. Let's go with those colors there. You're going to hear the choo-choo train going. I hear that whistle. So I'm going to come in here into the green, and I'm going to mix it up. Because I had had some color on the top of it. So here now, I'm gonna come in just the same way we did with our mushroom cap. If you Have you ever seen one of the paint by number sets, the old oil watercolor paint by numbers, or oil paint by number sets? That's what I'm gonna do with this. See how there's some areas here where it's a little bit, there's some bright spots. I'm just gonna paint this here. I'm going to pretend all little spaces are number ones. <laughs> Remember that? There'd be number ones, number twos. Oh, I loved those when I was a kid. I didn't have them often, but boy, when I got a little one, I was happy. So here I'm going to take, I'm going to come down here with a darker. 
I'm going to tap some things in there because I got a little bit of a line. I'm going to go to the back here, way, way, way at the back. You can play with different mountains way back. I'm just going to paint that green the whole way. I don't want to touch our ladybug. Don't want to do that. But see the green there because I had the different color background on. The green there got a whole different feel to it. And the same way here, coming up this mushroom, because you're going one color over another, just looks different a little bit. Let's go with this mossy green. I love this shade. Put it here so you can see it. But all the different bits of green, they're going to make your painting fantastical. Don't just go in there with one shade. Mix it up. And see now we have green way in the distance. The red has disappeared. We are no longer on, um, what's the red planet? Is it Mars? I think it's Mars. And you can see I'm kind of like, I'm not really focusing on any certain stroke. Kind of more like blending over the tops of those backgrounds. We're going to get some really interesting stuff here. Um, while, should have, before I did, before I did my greens, I should have put on our little hedgehog faces. Because they're not going to be dry. Paint in some more grass. And that grass got a little too thick. Only you and I know that. Going right to the hedgehog, right to there. We can turn this into a little flower, maybe. It's a little thick. I'm gonna take this, as, this is like a little bluey green here. These are good for making shadows, so. A little bluey green. I'll put some of that over here. We want these different. This gives us different feels, textures, heights, and that's what you want. Maybe. Maybe it's not what you want. You do what you want. But see, I like to take that red away. And when you paint, when you paint like this, you're gonna you're gonna really learn a lot. You really will one color over another when it's dry you learn a lot and I'm just I'm not doing this in any order it's there's no set formula it's as you wish Totally as you wish. We just need to go down this ladybug without making a ladybug run. So now I'm going to load up my brush and I'm going to make some little wisp here, but that's too thick. <laughs> Let's thin this out just a little bit. Thin it, roll it. There we go. That's what we want. These nice, fine, fine little lines and you, you get those you get the rolls by putting a little bit more water in loading that brush where it's not too thick not too thin you want it to be the goldilocks version for you you want it to be just right so i think down here maybe i'll make a little maybe i'll make a little feel up here, tie this into the ground so it's just not plopped out there. Tie it into the ground with some little, little touches. And I don't think we're going to paint a fairy house in here, but we do need hedgehog to do that. I'm going to clear this out, clear our brush, 
And I typically always use this as a chance to just relax. <laughs> You're not in a rush. You're just pushing, pushing your brush in, twisting it out into the top, twist, into the top, twist. So I have this color over here that is perfect. I don't know what the name of it, but it should be called Hedgehog Face. Just hydrate that one. This one right here. Can you see that? And I just want to load it up, load my brush up. And I want to work this enough to get it out where it's almost creamy. <laughs> not too thick, not too thin. Goldilocks texture. We are going with Goldilocks texture. Load that up. And then come down here. And we're going to paint our little hedgehog faces. Don't worry a lot right now about the shape. We are putting in that little blob. <laughs> the hedgehog face. This is layer one. Layer one. Oh, he's got a big face. We can fix that too. Um, this brush, I'm gonna, I, I wanna just keep painting with the same brush though for ya. We're gonna let this brush dry. I mean, we're gonna let this brush as it is. I don't know that I have another three here. But we're gonna move to the, we're gonna move to the shimmer and shine now. So the shimmer and shine is gonna from these fine tech the pearlescent colors and again the link is on the amazon bio our amazon page for that um this brush i kind of now let's just use it i said we were going to use the same brush for the whole painting i really always try to um say what i mean and mean what i say <laughs> I do change my mind <laughs> sometimes, but um, let's 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 try this. Okay, and we're gonna go with um, let's go with this color. And these are the colors of the elements. I love them. Look, there's earth, air, fire, and water. They're fabulous. Wait till you see them in action. I'm going to go with this and th this. Can you still see that one? Yeah, you can. And if you're watching this, make sure you give a little thumbs up. Okay. I'm going to set this paint out of our way for a second. Because I want to pull this in here and show you. This, and I did have the, I had the clear or the hedgehog face was what was on here. I'm gonna go in here and I know that there is color going on there. I know that, I'm all right with that. So here I'm gonna come and take, I think I wanna cover this whole bottom with that because we want this whole mushroom to just be magical. And you're gonna see what it does. Can you see that pearlescent already? This is, oh, this just, this blows my mind every time. <laughs> every time. I'm just turning that back and blowing it gently and I'm hoping you can see that pearlescent happening. The pearlescent effect comes out in full effect once it's dry. And this one is just, this one is shimmery and gorgeous. It makes the mushroom really look enchanted. Okay, that's that. The gills, I'm not going to enchant them. <laughs> They're already enchanted, but I am going to rinse this off just a little bit. And look, when you rinse this off, this is so cool. Watch the edge of this. I'm going to try to get you close here into the water and dip. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's so gorgeous. So magical, that color. Okay. 
So now we're going to go into reds because I said we were going to have a red cap on this mushroom. And we are. I'm going to uh, dab our little hedgehoggy faces quickly. I know I took the most away. But I'm going to I need to put in another layer on them. Dry my brush off on our bookmark, back into the Angora. Oh, this is a consistency right here that I want. That's perfect, 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 perfect. There's one little, yep, see how you can smush up anything that, anything that's glopped up from before. Loaded brush in here for our detail of our little hedgehog's face. Now that's so much better. So much better. And again, this one. A dry, and I'm gonna come along this bottom side with green on that guy, but not till the end. <laughs> okay, I just needed to do that. They're drying. I'm gonna rinse this out. And I'm gonna just take that color and some of it, put it underneath here. Some, not all, just some. See how those lines are staying because we let it dry? I love that, okay. All right, now let's work on that cap. We made this one hydrated, so I'm going to really roll my brush in here, and then we're going to come and we're going to paint right over the top. I'm going to come in, I'm going to grab a tiny little bit of dirty water, paint, bring it right around into the water again, because I want to spread this out. I want to spread out that that shimmer. See the shimmer back here is so much thicker than it is up here. Now I'm going to go into this color, grab this color, and over on this side, we're going to go with that. I'm going to do the same thing again, just one time in the color, dip it in, and then we're going to spread with the water. We're going to, can you see the water is just really, oh, the water is making it just flow perfectly. I'm going to bring a little bit of that red right here. Right there and touch in. That's all you got to do for that. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That's dry and that's shimmering. <laughs> might, it might. That's all we need. I'm going to, I'm going to come in here though. Get some green. Because the green... This green right here. This green. It really don't want to overdo it. A couple of magical those. And maybe, maybe. Oh, back there we just touched green just plumped it. So let's maybe put like a little green tree, a little couple little, couple little green trees right back here, way back here. Just dab it around a little bit. I'm going to take and rinse that brush off. See our little trees way back there. That's pretty. <laughs> I'm going to come back over to this. I'm going to load this brush up with this. Twirl it, twirl it, twirl it to load it, twirl it. It'll put it into a real pretty point for us too. So now, back here, way back here, I'm gonna come out with some trees. And these are gonna be just a little tree grove back here. Maybe a couple of 
will be bigger. Maybe there'll be a branch we can see. I don't want to put much detail in. We'll just have three little trees back there. With three trees without a lot of detail. Now I have this color on. This color is so important. Dip it in the water. This is this is our dark, dark color. Dip it in the water. Dip it in the water. And we're going to really play with these shadows now. We're going to get some great shadows going here. Scrub it, rub it, whatever you got to do. a nice little shadow for that little hedgehog. Look how it made him pop out. Popped right out. Dab it up around there to give him that furry little feeling. Love it. We can do that. Do some of that around our shroom base. And really just play with what's the brush. Think about your brush. And look, if I put more dark there on that side of the hedgehog's face, it's gonna make him pop. Same way, same way up there. A little bit from pop. Remember, I said I was gonna go in there with green grass. Let's go in there with that. That's way better for your nice little fella. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Okay. Well, you can see our mushrooms drying. Shimmery, shiny. Um, our trees, I think the trees really look good today. Add to the depth of the picture because we got a whole lot of sky there. Now I'm going to um, do the final the final thing to it that I like doing is um, I like putting some shadow on the side of the mushroom. And I'm going to do a, oops, sorry. I'm going to get a couple, little more of this color. A little bit more. Just a little bit more. It's on this brush. I'm going to touch it just once into this dirty water, just the tip, not the whole way down. And now here, I'm going to come right down here, right down there and here. Touch the tip again, just the tip, just that, right down here. Necessarily the whole way. Slightest little hint of shadow. I'm going to touch to go up in there to put some more up under there. And then I'm just going to touch this to bring the shadow over. And um, hopefully you can see how it just made that. Just that little bit of that little line of the dark really brought that out. If I have any on my brush left, which I don't think I do. I could take and come up in here. Nope, none left on my brush. So we have to now think about their little faces. So their little faces, they do take a minute to dry. They definitely take a minute to dry. So I'm not going to do the whole other one, <clears throat> but while that's drying, I'm going to recap and show you on here how we are going to um, how we're going to get that out of the way so you don't have a shadow I want to show you how we're going to put the lines on for this one take our paint this paint is um, gorgeous perfect for putting your lines on Again, you can do your rule of thirds. You don't have to do your rule of thirds. I'm going to put this mushroom over here. 
You can think about your stem however you want to do. That's got a lot of dark on it. That's a lot of dark on that stem. That's okay. I'll let the light down in the middle. And that one is kind of pre-shadowed for us. Looks like a little bunny rabbit. Looks like a little owl sitting in a tree. <laughs> Load the brush up. Let's do the gills. And the gills, think of the gills as a big semicircle. Or a big, what's the name of this? Is this ellipse? I don't know. I didn't learn those things in school. I learned them, but I didn't learn them. This one's going to have a low cap as well. And you see those touched and the colors bled. That's fine. I'm going to do that. Just do that. This one might actually be a fairy door mushroom, maybe. Okay, let's go over the gills. We're waiting on our hedgehogs to dry. Pick a point. Pick a point and slice your pie. Pick a point and slice the pie. <laughs> And then go half to half, half from the top, half down, half, 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 don't freak if it's not. And I like to, I like to twist this point up and make it really, really fine. To make it fine, we have been. We have been on this live 72 minutes. I need to get these little hedgehogs done. I've been finding each one of these paintings have been taking me about an hour. That line is a little bit thicker, and that's great. I want to show you something here cool you can do. If you have a line that you feel like, oh, it's too thick, not happy with that, that one looks weird, it's too thick, what, our minds do all these weird things to us, you're going to just take and dab a little, just dab it a little bit, it'll be okay, and then this one, our hedgehogs are almost dry, but I'm going to find our background. Let's find our background. Let's go with this one. Let's bring mountains in way back here. Let's bring some mountains in. Come right up to the edge of here. Put some big mountains, some little mountains. I'm not touching our mushroom. Got mountains in the distance, and then we're gonna have our up close. See that color? Just go right down there. And then we think we're gonna have about a little, maybe a little mid-range. We might make a little path that starts narrow, it gets wider as it comes out to us. We can put a lot of these little feels in right now. We can do a lot of them. We might put, end up putting some water back there. I can put shadow in a rounder. Remember, we're going to be painting over this. But I like to paint on things that aren't just the white. Um the white watercolor paper. Just 
we're not touching our mushroom. I'm loving that. Uh, the only place that I will not paint this is on the sky. Love it, love it, love it. Love it. Let's finish up. We're all the way done. I think those little hedgehog faces are dry enough. First thing that we're gonna do is know our limitations with watercolor. And sometimes you need to for fine, fine detail. Sometimes you need to get like just a Sharpie fine point. I have a lot of artist pens that I use as well. But I wanna use this just to, just to show you here. We're gonna put our little Little ladybug's face. It's just, just a little black circle. Look. And we're gonna come and we're gonna put a little ridge down her back. And then we're gonna put three little dots over here. That's all. If you wanna, if you wanna outline her the whole way, you can. But you don't have to. I like them both ways. <laughs> See, not a ladybug, ladybug. Again, let's do this. There, and make her head a little bit bigger. A little circle. There's a little circle, and then you can join it on. Do your little circle first, and she's just getting three dots on this side. She's she's uh, not in the position to have wing line we wouldn't see it so our little hedgehogs he's gonna go a little nose he's gonna get a little eye and he's gonna get a tiniest little mouth he's way back there way back there this little hedgehog is gonna get a little nose he's gonna get a little mouth He's smiling, he's happy. He sees his friend. Hey friend. And you you can paint these on absolutely. Absolutely you can paint these on. Okay, now the hedgehogs. <laughs> I love painting hedgehogs. I'm gonna zoom you right in so you can see this final, final, final bit here. We're at the final countdown. Uh, cap on your pen. Just be tidy when you're working, if you wanna. I find it really does help me. The same brush that we painted everything with. Come in here, grab some of this. Grab some of this magic water. Magical dirty water. And this is the important point. Roll it, roll it, roll it. Get your fine point on there. Do you see how fine that point is? Look at that point. That point's fine. So now what I want to do here is I want to just take and make little points on our hedgehog. I might paint his little ear on, but we're doing points on him. And these points are about the perfect color. I'm not putting them all over. Not going crazy. It's little points. Load it up. Roll it. And then we're gonna do the same back here. But really back here, look, I'm just gonna put some little dabs up. Because he's so far away, you're not gonna see him. You're not even gonna see his little points. a couple little things on them. But see those little jiggy jaggies that we put up there? That's all he needs. And we could do that on here. Look. Nothing's stopping you. Put those little. So there is no doubt he will not be mistaken for groundhog. 
And then just tap your breath. Have fun with this part. This part is the fun part. Your little faces come around here like this. So I'm going to paint that. Paint that part down. I think we're about done. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to come in here and get a little bit of, and see how these quick, these do dry really nice. I'm going to come here and grab this one. Load it up, load it up, load it up. <laughs> right here. Just gonna make some little, some little fields. They don't have to be everywhere. They do not have to be perfect. They don't. I'll put the sample back there on him. I'm gonna rinse this brush off. I'm gonna use just a little bit of, just a little bit now of hedgehog face. <laughs> Load my brush up and that consistency is so perfect. Oh, Load that brush up. Here I'm gonna take, get this closer y'all. The point is fine. The point can be a little finer. When I put in these little white spots now, these little hedgehog face colors, it's gonna highlight. See how it highlights there? And don't forget, turn your brush, turn your painting, whatever. Little white spots are important. Oops, because now it gives them a real hedge of color. <laughs> and I'll do the same out here, just with a couple little dots. Just different, different shapes, different sizes. You can see our faraway guy. And that's it. That is, that painting is done. Only thing we need to do is sign it. And again, always sign your painting. Come on, you took the time to create it. You need to sign it. And um, I like to sign with a brush. These are smaller paintings. And doing my signature isn't always um, perfect when you do it like this. So I'm gonna use my Sharpie, use an art pen. If you want, that Sharpie's not, not as juicy as it used to be. Let's take this guy. That's a Mirabu fine liner graphic. They're awesome too. <laughs> Except that one's out. I gotta put a new one in. <laughs> oh, this guy is this guy might be newer. No, he's not. Gotta find something to sign my painting with. What are you? No. What are you? Oh, you might work. Um, pit artist pen. And I, I, oh, you're out too. You're not out. I think it's just the texture of this. Texture of this. This one might want me to just sign it with a brush. That's what it wants. So I'm gonna come in here. Gonna load this up. Let's go dark. You can sign your painting in any color you want. Though. It's your painting. Load that up. It is fun painting on a signature. And I am P R I S C I L L. Dot dot <laughs> load it up again. Load it, load it, load it. Roll it, roll it to that fine, fine point. I need a tiny bit of water. Tiny. My 
be too much. No, H O U L I S T O N. And you can always you can always tell on my paintings if I've signed it with a brush or a, <laughs> or a pen. But always sign your work. So what do you think? Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you make something magical for yourself. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my goodness. <laughs>